Hello everyone. I was asked to make a video about the use of SWAT Cup Plus. And um, so I'm going to show you how to build a SWAT Cup Plus uh, project. Um, but I won't go too much into the uh, calibration and uncertainty stuff because I've already covered this in videos four and five for SWAT Cup. And that aspect is exactly the same. So I'm just going to show you how to, you can build a, a SWAT Cup Plus uh, or SWAT Plus Cup uh, project here. So once you start the program, you, you start it but after installation. Okay, so you get a menu system, which is exactly the same as before, if you're familiar with uh, SWAT Cup. If you're not familiar with SWAT Cup and this is uh, you're just using SWAT Plus Cup, then I suggest you should watch the videos four and five or on other videos that I have made about SWAT Cup. They all apply to uh, SWAT Plus Cup also. So you should watch those. So here you start the, the program and you build a new project. And uh, next, the first thing you're asked is texting out. So we can browse that text in out. And uh, I have one uh, here. And uh, next it asks you what type of program you want to use. You can have a choice of SPE, which is uh, the same as SUFI2 or PSO. So let's go with SPE right now. And then you want a project name. So I'm just going to call it the uh, first. And then you get dot spe dot swat plus cup added to this and that'll be the name of your project and then the location i'm just going to put it uh, where i got the text in out which would be here okay and um sorry um should be zero plus all right and then finish so let's see what's been done. Uh, I can go here to open project folder in Windows. And first, so this is our SWAT Plus Cup project. And what you have is a backup folder, which basically is your initial uh, model. Then Echo is a folder that uh, when various programs in SWAT Plus read something, they echo what they read into a file, which goes into the Echo folder. So this is uh, used for um, uh, catching the errors that you might have made uh, while making input files. Then there are iterations. Uh, uh, usually with SWAT Cup, as you know, you have to make several iterations and the history of which you can save into this folder. Then you have parallel processing. So if you optionally choose to run parallel processing, uh, then all that process takes place in this folder. And then you have the input uh, uh, and the output uh, of, of SPE and the inputs, uh, we will see it from the interface. But the, everything we do in the interface, it's here. So you really don't even need to use the interface. So we'll see that later. And then you have the SWAT plus uh, program and you have all the uh, SWAT plus cup programs, they are all in, in this folder. And it's important to say that all of this is really a lot of files here. It's initially quite confusing, but the outputs of uh, SWAT plus, they all have the extension dot text and that comes in handy. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so when you uh, start the program uh, from here, to put your input files. And the first thing is parinf.txt file. Uh, in here, you choose your the parameters that you want to calibrate. I'm not sure if SWAT Plus can calibrate all of its parameters or not. Um, it didn't use to. Um, it only uh, calibrates some of the parameters as far as I know. But uh, anyhow, initially, uh, I just make a run of the initial model just to see how it looks like. If it looks really bad, then you know that the uh, calibration does not help much. 
And if it looks sort of okay, then you may be able to improve it by calibration. So initially I set the number of parameters to one. I set the number of simulations to one. I choose a dummy sort of parameter, uh, let's set it to zero, which is already zero. And then I, I run the program and see how it looks like. So the next file is uh, the, the S, SW edit. And the, here you have to tell when you start the simulation, the number of simulation, and when you end the simulation. This file has a few uh, uses, which I have covered before. But uh, um, if, you, if you start the program and you crash at some point and you want to continue, you don't have to go to the beginning, right? So you start, your starting simulation could be, for example, 156 because it crashed on 156 before and so on. But, uh, and it has other uses. And then you have time.sim. These are the two uh swat plus files so here is really the basic difference between swat cup and swat plus is that uh these these, these swat files are different uh, here you have to give the the time when you start the simulation when you end the, sim the simulation and this information i have uh, actually uh i have the information Let's see if i can find it no um here uh, in my project here i have my observed information is already here in a text file and this tells you that i have well, I, I begin in 2000 and end in 2003 so that's my time uh, of simulation so i'm just going to edit this uh, go from 2000 and end uh, December of 2003. So that's why we need these files. Okay. And then uh, print is another file that you need to complete. And here you have to specify the skip years. So then the warm up period. So this is the important thing here. But uh, okay, I don't have a warm up period. But as you see here, SWAT plus can output a lot of files. And some of these files are really large. And of course, when you do a simulation for calibration, you don't want to output all of these files. You only want to output the ones that you need. So I suggest you make everything no, and only I have yes here for channel and channel SD. And this uh, outputs channel SD Murph dot, uh, uh, dot, dot monthly or daily or annual. So it only uh, outputs that one. And that's the one we need because uh, the flow and uh, water quantity, quality, all of these information are basically in that file, sediment and so on. So uh, I only make these yes. And then there is another file. And that file is um, also, if, you, if you're doing calibration, uh, the, the FIG file now looks like uh, the, uh, sorry, file CIO. Now it looks like this, uh, very different from before, but in this line, the CHG, which uh, I think stands for change, you need to have these two columns uh, like this. You need to have cal, params.cal, and calibration.cal. You need to have this. If you don't have this calibration.cal, then the program is not going to calibrate or change anything. So you need to make sure that this is, this is here. And then uh, after that, we go to absolute file. I have this now for historic purposes because right now um, there is no range here or nothing as there used to be before. That's because uh, it's really not being used uh, because SWAT plus now changes the parameters internally, right? Internally. So it doesn't look at the ranges here. It probably, I don't know if it does, but it looks at the ranges internally maybe because before i didn't allow anything outside of a certain range to be inputted into the uh, swat files but so now if you want to make 20 percent change to a parameter this is done uh, it's done internally and it's not written uh, uh, explicitly outside into any file 
so people try to look for that and they say, well, the parameter is the same, but the change has taken place internally and it, it's not written out to the files. I have asked before the SWAT people to uh, uh, output a, a log uh, file that uh, prints everything that has been changed and the value it had before and the value it had after the change. This is uh, very useful information. Uh, I'm not sure if they have done that in the new version or not, but uh, that would be something very useful, useful to have. So the next file is our observation. And right now um, we have um, this file, SDMRF, channel SDMRF, and this we have it for monthly, daily, uh, also uh, yearly and uh, average annual. Uh, the other file channel SD is also operational, but it's just not in the interface right now. So if you need variables from that file, you can write me and I will send you those. Um, here, so you have to give the number of variables, say one, and the name of the variable from, uh, and this this is the subbasin number. This is arbitrary, but uh, I mean, that's the format that I use. And we are doing monthly, so I'm going to say M. So M flow out, that's monthly flow out. If it was daily, I would put, D, annual, I would put A, so something like that. So from subbasin or channel number three. And these are, uh, these should be my observation. Uh, this is just an example that uh, exists in the program, but you have to put your own observation here. And my observations are here. Uh, this is from four years, 48 months. Uh, so I paste that simply here. Usually these files exist in Excel. So if you have it there, you just copy and paste here. So uh, this is correct. So I have one variable. This is from number three, and there are 40, 48 observations here. So you can have missing data and all that, but uh, I'm not going to go into that detail because you can just watch the previous videos. Uh, the next is extraction. Uh, so here again is the name of the, the the, the, that variable or that uh, which that file which the output will go so that should be the same that's again m flow out from subbasin number three or channel number three and then you have the instruction for extraction so here is the calibration program this is sbe this is the swap plus file name and we have one a variable that's flow and it resides in column number 10 in this file, in channel SDMRF uh, monthly file. And then the total number of uh, channels and so, so sub of channels. And again, that uh, information I have here, so you know how many channels or units you have, that's 262. So I just edit this for my project, so 262. And here again, it says the number of channels to get, uh, I have flow, so the number of flow from different channels. So I have one and it's from channel number three. And then you have the beginning and the end day of simulation. And if it's monthly, if it's annual, you just have 2,000, 3,000. If it's monthly, you have 2,000 month one to 2,003 month 12. If it is uh, daily, then you have year, month, and day, right? And so on. And then the next thing, so is correct everything, one, and that's number three, and okay, right. So, and then you go on to the objective function, and objective function, you have the observation file, and uh, so here I have the number of step variables, which is one. Objective function type, so I have uh, f five, nice active, and this is one, uh, is a factor for modified nice active. Uh, you can look in the manual for, for the meaning of these. And then I have, uh, this. so I have monthly, I have to edit this, monthly flow out from uh, channel number three. Okay, these are, this is the weight of the variable. This is the dynamic flow separation. I have since taken this out. This is an older version. So if you get the new version, you won't have this um, because it didn't really 
the work uh, separation of uh, flow and very well so and then this is but this is there the constant flow separation uh, if you want it or not and uh, please uh, go to the manual for these and if the separation of uh, is considered then you have to give weight to the below and above that threshold separation anyhow again the manual and then this is just a percentage of error in the measurement and uh, this is the number of uh, the number of observations and so I, I'm going to delete uh, there may be things here yeah from before so I'm just going to delete all these and I'm just going to get this data again from here I have already put it here copy and paste here all right so uh flow out three one one so everything is fine and then the next file is the name again the name of the uh, sorry down here the name of the the variable and that's monthly flow out three so that is correct so that's all that's really all you have to do in terms of input and then there is no observation here so these are optional you may want to extract uh, like sediment you know just to see how it looks like while you are calibrating only for flow so you can extract sediment for all the sub basins or a few of them and uh, the format is just the format of extraction file that's SPE that's the name of the SWAT plus file there are three variables that we, we want to see and that's they are in column 8 10 and 13 and they are no flow the flow in, the flow out, and sediment, for example. That's just an example. And then you have to, of course, edit this. That was 262. And then uh, the specification. So for variable number one, which is flow in, we, we want two sub-basins from sub-basin three and five, or from I don't know, channel now, or what they call it, unit, or uh, three and five. Then for variable number two, which is flow out, we want three of those units or channels from one, two, and three, and for vari variable number three, which is sediment, you would like to see sediment for three of these uh, channels, and those are channels number one, two, and three. So that's what that means. And the rest are the same for daily, yearly, and uh, average annual. The next thing here is the extractable, uh, is executable files, and here is the pre-processing simply does some cleanup and then it does runs the uh, Latin hypercube. So to sample from your parameter spaces, then SPE run simply runs this uh, SPE executable file. And then you have the post-processing. Here we calculate the goal function, new parameter and 95 PPU. And optionally, if you have no observation, you can check these. And then the extract, uh, if you, uh, you can extract from SD morph daily, monthly, yearly, annual, as I said before, but here we have the, the monthly, so we check this file only. And that's really all there is to it. So um, save everything and then um, close everything. And so we are ready to run. So let's, before we run, um, let me just say one more thing, and that is, um, uh, with the program comes uh, a file called uh, with the program comes a file called uh, uh, SWAT P dot X E X E that's the SWAT plus version 60.4 that's included in this program but you may have different versions um, as far as I could check, uh, they're more or less the same. The outputs may be different, but the structure of input and output is the same. So it runs. Uh, but if you compare it with, uh, I don't know, 59.3, the, the results may be different, all right? So make sure that you put your own executable here, but call it SWATP. And now there is uh, 60.5, I think available and, and other versions. So uh, you may want to copy your own version in, into this and, and, and call it SWAT. So the next thing we have to do is just to 
uh, to run. And then, so I will run the pre-processing and that makes the Latin hypercube samples. Yes. And then the next step is to run the program. And when you run the program, uh, uh, as I said, this is 60.4 and the SWAT plus is running. Now in your version, you may get a lot of screen output. You may get a lot of screen output that really slows down the program. So you may want to suppress that screen output. I hope SWAT has an option for that, that you can suppress it because SWAT plus is, I think, already quite slow. And with all that input, it output to the screen, it becomes even slower. And also, as I said before, make sure you don't print uh, files that you really don't need uh, during calibration. Uh, you can print them after when you make just one run, but during calibration, when you're making 500 simulations, I mean, this is going to substantially slow down the, the program. So uh, try to suppress. Uh, if there is no option, I would ask SWAT people to <laughs> provide you with the executable that doesn't that doesn't print the screen output or compile your own version. Um, I think the source code that is available. Um, I think you you'll be able to compile a version which runs faster. I, I have done that. So you compile your own version or ask SWAT people for uh, for a copy that doesn't have the screen output. So we're going to wait uh, for this to run. All right, the program finished running. Um, okay, now what we have to do is run the post-processing. And because we only have one run and uh, there is matrices that cannot convert with one run. So what we have to do is just ignore uh, the error message here and say, okay, do you want to save this iteration? Yes, I usually save the first iteration. I call it iteration zero or original to just know that this is the, the first iteration without the first run without any calibration. So now we can look at the output and the output, uh, this is the 95 uh, PPU. Of course, we only have one run, so we were able to fold the program into giving us uh, the initial simulation. And this simulation, okay, from here on, you need to go into the process of calibration and whether it's worth it to calibrate this model or not. I mean, there are uh, uh, not such a good signs uh, in, in, in these peaks that uh, we have. So the observation and and the simulation anyhow there are two there is really no dynamics here so i'm not sure if this can be uh this can benefit from calibration or not but uh, i mean these are different issues so uh, you can watch this in uh, previous videos that i have discussed uh, all of these and then this would be 95 ppu if you have no observation but we didn't do that uh, dot t plots and best parameter and best simulation. All right, these you can find in the previous uh, uh, videos. And let me just go to the uh, summary stat. In the summary stat, you get uh, the information and all of these uh, goodness of fit uh, measures uh, that, that you're given here. You can go to the manual for definition of all these but just uh, our nice star cliff is minus four so it's really not a very good model to start uh, calibrating but those are other issues as i said so um please watch the previous videos if you haven't and there you get a lot more information about how to go about now calibrating this model but i just wanted to show how uh, you set up the SWAT plus cup and how you can run it. Okay, so I hope that was useful. If there are more questions, of course you can write me and uh, I try to answer your questions. Thank you for watching.